Hey guys, today I have my first SSD. It is a Corsair GT Force um, SATA 300 drive. It's 120 gig solid state um, with speeds of 550 megabytes per second read and 515 megabytes per second write. Just a quick look at the box. It's your most basic box. It's, I don't know, I've never seen a hard drive package this way, but I would give Corsair credit for this. I'll just go ahead and slice this open. Got my copy of Windows here to reinstall. So here is the SSD. Before we get into that, let's go ahead and see what else comes in the box here. So that is everything. Uh, okay, so they give us, they give you, or well, yeah, me, you, us, a mounting bracket to adapt it from a two and a half inch drive bay to a three and a half inch drive bay. Um, and the mounting screws, of course, and it says Corsair, it's black, it looks nice, the hard drive just kind of sits there. So that's cool, I might use that, um, as you know, my, or may or may not know my case is the anti Lamboy Air, and it has spots of this at the bottom of the case, but in my effort to clean up the cabling, I might get smaller cables and I'll just use that, uh, that adapter piece. Okay, so we'll go ahead here and, um, just open the clamshell packaging. Seems to be stuck. Okay, there we go. Alright. So here's the SSD. It is light. It is made of metal. Um, on the back, it is brushed aluminum, if you guys can see that, which is a brushed metal, which is nice. Warranty void if removed. Um, so I'm not going to do that. If you want to see what it looks like on the inside, just YouTube around. Um, this video is not going to be me comparing the hard drive speed between the solid state and the mechanical drive because if you want that there's thousands of videos out there it'll just be me showing you benchmarks for this drive because I didn't find any when I was looking for this or I didn't find any good videos rather so I'll just I'm going to do an install of this and um, and then we're going to look at the benchmarks see how fast it is and everything like that okay let's go down to my case alright guys so we're back here under my desk I have my SATA cable that's already connected, and I connected, uh, SATA, sorry, SATA power cable and my SATA data cable connected to the 6 gigabyte port on my motherboard. Um, it's not actually, the, the hard drive itself is not going to fit using the air mount system that the M Lamboyer has, so I'm just going to have to put this thing on the ground where it wanted it. I'm not going to screw it to the bottom of the case um, right now because, as you can tell by the gross mess of cables in here, something has to be done about that, and so I'm going to be fixing those on the weekend hopefully. So I'm just going to go ahead and here and connect the the power cable and then connect my data cable which by the way are like a, they're like a foot and a half long so they're ridiculously way too long for this. Okay so I've got that connected. I'm just going to kind of squeeze this back inside here and then that just kind of sit there um, alright, so the, ne the other thing you, you're going to have to do with your case is take your other hard drives and just unplug at least the, um, at least the data cable. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here, is just go ahead and unplug each data cable from my hard drive. So the, the drives will power up, but they won't actually connect, which is really, uh, really important to what we're doing here because you don't want your new operating system to install there on that. Okay, let's go back up upstairs and uh, we'll power this puppy on. Hey guys, so when you first turn on, you're going to want to jump right into the BIOS. Uh, I have the new um, EFI BIOS here with the, the mouse interface. Uh, anyway, in the bottom here I can see the Corsair Force GT hard drive followed by my, my uh, DVD player, or yeah, my, my Blu-ray player. So, what in this um, on this mother um, bias, you're gonna want to drag this in front of that, so it'll boot from the drive, from the disk drive before it boots from the hard drive, because there's nothing on the hard drive. You're also before you start, you're gonna want to go up to advanced mode here, head over to advanced is different on every uh, on every board, and head down to SATA configuration, and then just make sure that the board is in a AHCI mode, um, and then uh, if you want RAID, put it into RAID mode. Um, and that's important because that, you'll be able to utilize the full 
full advantage of um, of your yeah okay so you can see here the hard drives or what's plugged in where so the cursor forces in the first gray slot but you'll be able to sorry, utilize the full potential of your of your device of your SSD so we'll just head back out to the easy mode now that that's uh, saved did I save that? Oh, actually no sorry mine, mine came like that so I don't have to change that uh, yeah so the disk drive is here so what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop my windows disk inside and I know what a lot of people are going to say watching it and I'm going to do it just because people are going to say it they're going to go, so that's what a Windows disk looks like, because they they download cracked copies. Now, don't get me wrong, I may or may not have done that at some point in my past, but the way I see it is, um, the way I see it is, if you put this much money into building an expensive computer, why are you going to cheap out with the operating system? Sure, you can get it for free, right? But... I don't know, I just didn't see, I didn't see the advantage uh, to that. Oh, it's gone out of focus here. Hmm. I don't know why it does that. Well, I know why it does that. But, yeah, so I, I, I don't know, I just prefer to buy it. You know, I don't have, I don't have a problem. It isn't that expensive. I have Windows 7 Professional. Um, I built this computer just to purely play games. So, that is what it does. And now it has a ridiculous amount of storage and it should be ridiculously fast. Anyway, so I'm going to let this go ahead and just load up here. And I'll just pause this and come back when it's done. Alright guys, so we're back here. Windows has just finished loading files. And we're going to go ahead and just hit the install. It's really easy to install. Just go ahead and uh, hit next and install now. The setup will start. This may take a while because it's still going off of the disk. Um, and you're going to always want to do a clean install on the SSD. So you and you won't hit upgrade because there's nothing on there. You want to go install a new copy. The drive will just appear there. Go ahead and hit next. Extracting files, expanding files. So it'll go ahead and it'll install Windows. And then you'll come back in. You'll have the fun of installing all of your drivers. I also want to note, uh, I hope you haven't done this yet, and you shouldn't have because I didn't mention it, um, but don't wipe your other drive, your um, existing C drive just yet, because what you'll be able to do after this is installed is you'll be able to actually plug that back in and boot off of your new SSD and copy files back from there um, if you need them. So that'll be, it's a really nice thing to have just until you've completely set up your new machine. And if something goes horribly wrong and your SSD dies, you can actually, if you still have that drive, connect it back up and just change the boot order back to that and it'll just boot right off of that drive. Um, you want to make sure this is the only drive you have installed because even if you have two drives and you click one, it'll, Windows, for whatever reason, decides to install the boot information on, on the other drive, which was a mistake that I made when I first had my two 750s hooked up here. So it was constantly referring back and forth between disks, which is just unnecessary wear and tear. Anyway, this will take its sweet, sweet time, so I will be back with you guys when this is when this is finished alright guys so we're back here with our installation let's go ahead and type in my name I don't need a password for this computer uh, I'll just click activate online because I've already used the, the key so this will probably lead to trouble later on but huh that's not my time zone, but it is my time. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, my desktop. So, what I'll do now mm, is I'll go back and I'll reinstall all of my programs, because obviously this is a, a brand new machine and there is nothing on here. So I'll go back and install all of the drivers and all the programs and everything, we'll come back and we'll do some uh, benchmarks and some closing thoughts on this SSD. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just leave, leave, it, leave it there. Um, uh, I, I know a lot of people will often say, you know, forget the, the disk that came with the, uh, the motherboard. I like to use that disk and the graphics card one too, just because it just, I find just easier just to pop that in and get things up and running because odds are that obviously they'll probably be out of date, the drivers that you install. But they're enough to just get you going right away versus having to go to the site and download everything individually. 
So I really like those, so I'm going to do it that way, and, um, and we'll get back to you with some benchmarks. Hey guys, so uh, I've gotten everything installed here, and I went ahead and ran three benchmarks using Crystal Diskmark, AS SSD, and uh, ATTO Disk Benchmark, just are three um, sort of industry accepted standards for doing benchmarks. I ran a couple, um, a couple different tests, uh, and I put them all here on the screen just because that way I don't have to waste your time flipping back and forth. So you can quickly see them. They're in that order, left to right. Um, so on the left, the only thing I changed with the Crystal Disk Mark is I did three tests at a, 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 a gig, and um, then in the center is just uh, your standard test, tested the sequential read writes, the 4Ks, as well as, well as the access time. And then ATTO is just um, just a standard test, didn't change anything there, it's a 256 megabyte test. Um, in ATTO, it did reach all of the specifications um, uh, as stated on the box it, of uh, maximum write speeds of 512 megabytes and read of 557, so it's a little bit higher. Um, in AAS SSD, it was lower than that, um, and the, the same saw in Crystal Disk Mark. So I thought this was just interesting because you can see, you know, across different drives, um, what's going on uh, in terms of different speeds and what different programs read. It, um, uh, show you another thing to consider um, when thinking about this is because it's um, um, synchronized memory. It th this uh, the drive is better at reading. Uh, I think it's compressed data. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so that's like it. Like the the box. Um, the box is not lying to you. It's the the correct um, correct speeds. It's just your computer doesn't normally use that kind of data. Something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, so anyway, I just thought I would just show you what I got with my speeds. Uh, some people will will notice. Well, you know, you got to test it when there's nothing on it or when it's plugged in as a secondary drive. This is plugged in uh, and it was being tested as my main boot drive because if you're buying an SSD you're probably using it for your main boot drive so you probably want to know what speeds you're going to get uh, like that versus being a storage device. My storage drives are just two big 750 gig drives and they're fine they run at whatever speed they want and it's I don't have a problem with that. Uh, so anyway here you go and um, yeah so this has been my unboxing and review and benchmarking of my new um, Corsair GT4 120 gig SSD. Thanks for watching, guys.